In the past decade, a large number of healthcare professionals and drug companies are advocating that we develop a poly pill to treat and prevent individuals with lifestyle mediated chronic diseases. It is envisaged that this poly pill or super drug will contain aspirin, a statin, and one or two blood pressure drugs. It is surprising that they've advocated this because we already have medication that along with nutrition could eradicate basically all the chronic diseases that afflict modern society. That medication is exercise. And that's not surprising because humans, as humans, we have evolved to support a physically active lifestyle. Our genes evolved from Paleolithic Stone Age hunters and gatherers. In these societies, daily physical activity was important for their existence and to survive. If you could not <coughs> hunt and gather, <coughs> you did not survive. So therefore, the individuals who were able to hunt and gather have passed on their genes, and those genes require physical activity. And if we don't get physical activity, our genes maladapt and we get chronic diseases. This photograph is of the Zane Bushmen. They're an indigenous hunter-gatherer tribe in southern Africa. And they give us a glimpse of how, of how our ancestors lived in the Paleolithic Stone Age era. The Industrial Revolution and the Technology Revolution in the, 20, in the 19th and 20th century have played a big part in engineering physical activity out of our lives. In fact, it's very, very difficult now to be physically active. And this has occurred in a very, very short space of time. We have moved from being a physically active to an inactive society. In fact, it has been insidious and it has occurred within four generations. And genes that evolved to be physically active now maladapt in these modern societies, inactive societies. And because of that, we have this explosion of death and disability from non-communicable diseases like diabetes, cardiovascular disease, heart disease, frailty, and osteoporosis. In addition, the recent digital revolution has also played a big role in the reduction in our daily physical activity. The vast majority of us spend an enormous amount of time on screens, viewing screens on mobile apps, on our laptop computers, and on our home entertainment systems. And all of this viewing involves sitting. And very worrying is that the current generation of children are spending an enormous amount of time watching these screens. Previous generation of children were able to get their physical activity <clears throat> outside while playing with each other. In fact, the current generation of children are probably the first in the history of mankind that are going to have to find a way to put physical activity into their lives. A study published in 2010 gives us a rough idea of the impact that a sedentary lifestyle can have on someone's health. What they did, they got a group of men 20 years of age and they asked them to decrease the number of steps that they took per day from an average of 10,000 to 1,300 for two weeks. After two weeks, their fitness level decreased by 7%, their visceral fat increased by 7%, and their insulin sensitivity decreased by 17% within two weeks. Dwight Eisenhower was the 34th president of the United States. In 1955, he suffered a heart attack. And at that time, the guidelines were that you, you were bed rested and you became inactive for six months to treat the condition. His cardiologist, Paul Dudley White, recommended that President Eisenhower actually undertake exercise as part of his rehabilitation. And probably the reason for this was two years prior to this, a British physician called Jeremy Morris published a seminal paper in Lancet in 1953. And it involved London transport workers. What he did was he took the bus driver and bus conductor who worked in the old double-decker buses. The bus driver sat all day, 
The bus conductor walked up and down the aisle, up and down the steps, taking 200 flights a day, taking the fares. And he looked at the instance of heart disease between the bus driver and the bus conductor. What he found was the bus conductor had a 30% lower incidence of heart disease than the bus driver. And numerous studies since have shown that compared to people who are physically inactive, that those of us who are active have a much lower risk for chronic diseases, such as diabetes, cardiovascular disease, physical frailty, osteoporosis, dementia. In fact, individuals who walk 120 minutes a week have the same remission from depression as the combined effect of drug and cognitive behavioral therapy, showing that exercise has a tremendous impact on both their physical and their mental health. What effects do we get from exercise? We get two effects. We get an acute effect and a chronic effect. The acute effect is the effect that we get in response to the exercise, to a single bout of exercise. So it's the health benefits that you get during and within hours after an exercise bout. So if you all walk out of here now and go for a 30 minute walk, it will probably lower your blood pressure, improve your insulin sensitivity, and decrease the amount of fat in your bloodstream. The chronic response to exercise or the changes that occur in our organs and systems if we repeat the exercise on a regular basis. It means that if we repeat the same work or the same effort, it becomes much easier. We have improved our fitness. We now understand, or have a much greater understanding, of the cellular and molecular mechanisms that underpin the positive effects on exercise on the body. Every time you go to exercise, whether it's a walk or a jog or to lift a weight, your muscles release a host of chemicals. And these are called myokines. And they interact with virtually every single biological system in our body and result in both acute and chronic effects. All positive. And if you can get me a poly pill that can do that, I'd be very interested to see it because it certainly won't happen in our lifetime. What sort of exercise do we need to improve our health? Well, health-related fitness is directed towards improving our health and allowing us to perform activities of daily living. We don't need to have the fitness level of a world-class athlete, but there are four things that we need. We need to have cardiovascular fitness, muscular endurance, ideal body composition, low visceral fat, large amount of lean muscle mass, and be flexible. I'll focus on the cardiovascular for a moment. It is recommended that Irish adults get on average 30 minutes of moderate intensity aerobic activity on at least five days of the week for a total of 150 minutes a week. And the good news is you can actually accumulate this. If you can't do the 30 minutes because of time limitations, you can do 10 in the morning, 10 at noon and 10 in the afternoon, or 15 in the morning or 15 in the afternoon. But the important message here is that you don't necessarily, 30 minutes is recommended. If there's one message you get today is that any form of activity for any duration is better than no activity. And currently 75% of Irish adults do not meet these recommendations. If we look at children, it is recommended that 5 to 18 year olds should get at least 60 minutes of moderate to vigorous physical activity every day. Currently, one in five 10 to 12 year olds meet that recommendation. And one in eight teenagers meet that recommendation. And this is worrying because risk factors and lifestyle or health behaviors track in an individual across life, the lifespan. So if you're inactive and you're unfit, as a teenager or a prepubescent, the likelihood is you will be obese and unfit as an adult. Secondly, the aging process is inevitable. Primary aging is inevitable. The organs and systems start to weaken do not, and do not function as well. And this process starts in our 30s. So we have this wonderful opportunity in our teenage years and, and preschool years to increase or to maximize our muscle mass, our cardiorespiratory fitness, and our bone mass that we're going to lose after 30 years of age. In fact, if you look at bone mass, it's inevitable that men, and particularly women, will develop osteoporosis during their lifetime. There is also st substantial evidence that young girls who are physically active 
and deposit large amounts of bone mineral density will cross the osteoporotic threshold much later than someone who is inactive. We also know that 90% of bone mineral deposition occurs before the age of 18 in girls and 20 in boys. That's that window of opportunity. We should have a national policy in Ireland that ensures that every single girl who leaves secondary school has maximized her bone mineral density. Because I want to make sure she doesn't cross the osteoporotic threshold when she's 50, but when she's 70. And that is very, very important. The, aging, the, the, the age of the Irish population is going to change dramatically in the next 25 years, where a large proportion is going to be above the age of 60. And as we age, the important thing is that we have, func that we have functional capacity, that we're independent. That's the important thing as we age. And there is what we call the frailty threshold. It's the minimum amount of functional capacity that you have to have to be able to perform activities of daily living. And that's normally around five times your resting metabolic rate. There is evidence now, substantial evidence, that boys and girls who were physically active during their youth and continued with moderate intensity activity during their adult life increase the time before they reach their frailty threshold by 25 to 30 years. Now, can you imagine reaching that threshold frailty in your 90s rather than your 70s. I should also point out that an untrained adult or, or elderly person gets tremendous benefits from exercise, even if they haven't exercised during their life. They can improve their strength, their walking speed, their ability to climb stairs, and their cardiovascular fitness with a six to eight week program. Even in their 80s and 90s, exercise is medicine at all stages of our life. I'm sure you're all familiar with this. This is the International Space Station. At $150 billion, the most expensive man-made object ever made. It's a marvel of science technology. Marvel. Allows us for the first time to live and to work in space. However, it's got a downside. Because space has zero gravity. And it's very, very similar to bed rest and inactivity and not exactly what our Stone Age genes want, need. Our Stone Age genes require physical activity. So what did the NASA scientists do? They put a treadmill on the space station to allow them to run. They put a weight training system on the space station to allow them run, to allow them exercise. Why is that phenomenal? There isn't a lot of space on the space station, believe you me. And per square meter, it's the most expensive real estate in the world. But they thought exercise was important enough to put on that. And here's us, 275 miles below, down in terra firma. And we can't get anyone to exercise. Boy, can we learn from the people in space. We need to learn from their practices. And as a society and as a country, we need to develop appropriate interventions to ensure that we have productive healthy citizens at all stages of their life. So I hope I've convinced you that exercise is important, and I'll leave you with a prescription. First of all, any exercise is better than no exercise. Break up your prolonged sedentary bouts of exercise. From now on, your New Year's resolution, every time you get a call on your mobile phone, you're going to stand up to take the call. If you sit for more than 30 minutes, standing up for even 90 seconds has health benefits. Break up your sedentary time. Become what we call a breaker. If time is an issue, then accumulate your 30 minutes of physical activity. Select activities that you enjoy. Very, very important. And exercise at your preferred intensity. Go out and exercise at an intensity that you enjoy. Don't be worried if it's too difficult or too hard. Pick something that you enjoy and you will get tremendous health benefits and be consistent. So in conclusion, exercise is medicine, and it's the only prescription with unlimited refills. Thank you.